Okay, so here we have to evaluate the limit as x goes to negative infinity of th square root 3x squared minus 2 divided by x plus 1. So this is kind of a weird limit, right? We have a rational function and we have a square root and we're approaching negative infinity. So what, what would you think this answer could be, right? We're plugging in a very large negative number and so we're going to get a very large positive number squared in the numerator. And then we're going to take the square root of that. So it's like kind of like that cancel it out the square, right? S square root of x squared is just absolute value of x or just x, right? And in the denominator, we also have x. So maybe it's 1, maybe it's, I don't know, something to do with 3 or something like that. And we're going to see what the answer is algebraically. So how do we go about this? Well, in general, a, a good trick for rational functions, limits of rational functions as they approach infinity, is to divide by the highest power in the denominator. In this case, it's just 1, right? We have x plus 1 in the denominator. So we're going to divide both numerator and denominator by x. And so you can see I have divided this by x, this by x, and that by x. In the denominator, we can simplify a bit, right? We get 1 and 1 over x, or x over x is 1. But in the numerator, it's kind of tricky. How do we simplify this? And, well, we can actually write x as the square root of x squared, right? If you simplify this, you're going to get absolute value of x, which is kind of like x. But here, here, there's a negative sign. It's kind of confusing, right? It's actually not very... You kind of have to get practice with this to kind of understand why this works. Because it's not very obvious from the get-go. So, x, right? The square root of x squared is absolute value of x because if I plug in a negative number right? When I square it, it becomes positive and then take the square root, it's going to become the positive version, right? For example, negative 3, plug that in, I'm going to get negative 3 squared is 9. Square root of 9 is 3, so it gave me the positive version. But if I plugged in 5, 5 squared is 25, square root of 25 is 5. It's going to also give me the positive version, and so it's going to give me absolute value of x. And remember, absolute value of x is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to negative x when x is less than 0. And in this case, we're only dealing with x being negative, right? Because x is approaching negative infinity. And so we can say that square root of x squared is absolute value of x, which is negative x. And so x by itself is negative absolute, sorry, negative square root of x squared. Kind of not very intuitive, but once you get kind of the practice, it'll make more sense. So here we can convert this to a square root. And why are we even converting this to a square root in the first place? Well, actually, it's because when we have two square roots and we divide them, we can divide their insides. And so take a look at what's going to happen. We have 3x squared minus 2 divided by x squared. So in other words, it's 3x squared divided by x squared, or 3, and negative 2 divided by x squared, or negative 2 over x squared. And so now we have a limit that makes a lot more sense. In the numerator, 3 is not affected by x. But this term, right, as x gets very large negative, the denominator is going to get really large, right, x squared. Say negative 1,000, negative 1,000 squared is a million, right? It's a very large number. So this is going to approach 0. 1 over x is also going to approach 0. Say x is negative 1,000. It's a very, 1 over negative 1,000 is a very small negative number. 1 over negative a million is an even smaller negative number, right? It's approaching 0 as well. And so all we're left with is negative square root 3 divided by 1, right? This 1 still stays. And so, in other words, our final answer is negative square root 3. And so that is kind of the rigorous algebraic technique to do it. A little bit of a shortcut that if, if say, I didn't have to show all the steps, maybe you don't even have to show the steps. This is what I would kind of think about this as. So here's what I copied on the limit here. We know that as we approach infinity, these constants, they don't really matter, right? Because, say, this term is going to be like a thousand squared, right? It's going to be a million squared. It's, it's so much bigger than two. Who even cares about the two or the one? And so we can sort of disregard it. And so when we have the square root of a product here, square root of three times square root of x squared, we can break those up. And again, square root of x squared is absolute value of x, like I, right? Because we, when we square it, it always becomes positive. And in this case, because we're approaching negative infinity, square absolute value of x is negative x. And now you can see the x's will sort of cancel. This is not, again, this is not a rigorous algebraic technique, but this is kind of a sort of intuition behind it. The x's will sort of cancel, quote unquote, and you'll be left with negative times the square root of 3. So that's kind of just a shortcut method if you want to avoid all the algebra and maybe you don't need to show the rigorous steps.